I should have sat up here. Wow. Okay. Three parts, like I usually have, okay? Here's the order, though. Dallas Willard, some of you may know this name. A Greek word, okay? And then the gospel. All right. The philosopher Dallas Willard once said that familiarity can breed unfamiliarity. And unfamiliarity can breed ignorance, and ignorance can breed contempt. So, all you young folk and even the older folk, those of you that think that you're familiar with the Christian story, be careful. Because, again, familiarity can breed unfamiliarity. And unfamiliarity, ignorance, and ignorance can lead to contempt. It's how it's possible that some people can be raised their whole life in the church, and yet they get to this point where they have contempt for it. They hate it. But sometimes, in my estimation, one of the most frequent things I have to do when I do porch visits with people is we have to almost get through this hurdle of, you think you know what Christianity is about, but actually you don't. And it's really hard to do that because sometimes we don't like being told that we're looking at Christianity wrong. But follow me for a moment, because let's do a Greek word real quick. Ephesians chapter 2 does something fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And the first five or six centuries of the church loved Ephesians 2 verse 10, which Debbie just read. And it talks about how one day everything is going to be gathered up in Christ. Everything is going to be gathered under the headship or under the leadership. Everything is going to be brought to oneness under Christ. So let's try this, okay? This is a fun word, call and response. Let's see if you can do it. So I'm going to break down this famous Greek word, okay, in parts, and you just say the word back to me. Anna. Anna. Great job. Let's try that again. Anna. Anna. Kepha. Kepha. Lyo. Sais. Thai. Put it together. Right. Nobody does. <laughs> can you do it? Yeah, of course I can do it, but why would I? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, this word, kepha, that's a head, right? So brought together under the headship brought together under things. And so one of the things is, sometimes I wonder if uh, young folk, they think that Christianity is about dividing us against the world. Rather than realizing, actually Christianity is about bringing all things together. The word is harmony, the word is shalom. About the plan is for God to gather all things up under the headship so that everyone and everything can experience the shalom that we lost. So here's the question for you, and this is the last part. For all of you young folk, how do you understand the gospel? Because if your understanding of the gospel leads us to be divisive with one another, it's probably not gospel. Or let's think about the things that lead us to be divided against one another. Yeah, okay, obviously the... One of them is politics, but you know what else? is like being cynical and gossip. These things tear people apart, and that is the opposite movement of gathering all things together. So this week, I invite you to live out the gospel, but do it in this way. Do it in a way that's anticipating the fact that God's going to bring all things together. Don't let divisions happen between you and other people. Don't let cynicism and gossip or um, cliques or, you know what I mean. All of these things are inherently anti-Christian. Because Jesus, even in his ragtag group of 12 apostles, brought together people that never should have been friends to begin with. So it's fascinating, even from the start of Jesus' ministry, was always bringing people together. So may we be people that live out this word that Debbie doesn't want to pronounce out loud. Anna Kefalao says thy.
which I'm probably mispronouncing, but I think you get the gist. Let us be people of community, not division. Amen.